Peter, let me ask you this. You're so convinced that Bitcoin is going to inevitably land up at zero. So what do you think triggers this crash to zero, especially as we point out that more and more people are adopting Bitcoin? What is going to make all of these people change their mind and dump it and lead it to completely crumbling to zero? What's going to happen? Well, I think all that has to happen is it really loses its momentum. I think maybe some of the institutional players, there's not that many that have come in, but some have come in uh, to the extent that they decide to get out, uh, that you know the trade isn't working out for them. I mean, look, Bitcoin got up to 60,000 back, I think it was in April of this year. And basically that's where it is right now. I mean, it hasn't really made any additional- It made a new all time high. Oh, yeah, but it's it, but it, it it sold off. I mean, right now we're about sixty thousand. We're a little bit below as, where as, we were. As do April. most assets, get a new right, all-time but, high, dropped balances right, right, potentially but, hit yes. another one. Are, are you moderating this, or are you just there here to tout Bitcoin too? Is that your main goal of I'm, Bitcoin? I'm here to so, play so, both yeah, sides. I, I, yeah, I'm making a point here. You don't need to argue with me. My I'm, point I'm is highlighting that, the price facts, Peter. Yeah, but go yeah, ahead. And I, make I know your that. Point. I know that. But let me finish making my point. You're the moderator. Right. I know, and, and I will continue the, to do so. But yes, finish I know, point. but you're clear, I can make my own case. You're, no you're, problem. You're, you're, I don't clearly, you're, clearly, you're clearly biased, and I get that. You're part of the shills out there that are trying to get people to buy Bitcoin. You probably have a bunch of Bitcoin advertisers. And my point is, we've had an unprecedented amount of money spent advertising Bitcoin. I mean, I, every time I turn on financial television, all I see, one commercial after another, highly produced, very slick, Madison Avenue campaign, trying to get people to buy Bitcoin or some other crypto. All of this push, massive amounts of money spent, all kinds of retail people getting sucked in and the price hasn't gone up. So what that tells me is that there's massive distribution going on. The stronger hands that got in early have been pumping this market up and they are gradually unloading their digital tokens to the public. They're spending all this money to con people into buying what they want to sell. And yeah, you have some people that have Johnny come lately that have been attracted by the greed, which always happens at tops of every bubble. Some of the people who were negative early on throw in the towel, they capitulate. Uh, they need to get in on it because they've missed up. They've missed so much action and you get some people that come in and that's happened. But the momentum is going to drop. Bitcoin is going to crack. Maybe once it gets back down below 20,000, you'll have a lot more selling coming in. I think a lot of people have taken out loans against their Bitcoin, which they hadn't been able to do in the past. So you have a leverage bet now among the hodlers. I think when the margin calls come, there's not going to be a way to meet them. You're going to have forced liquidation. There's not going to be anybody to take the other side of the trade. It's not like you got a bunch of shorts in Bitcoin that are going to cover. Uh, it's just going to fall into a vacuum. The whole market is going to implode. Uh, you know, the losses are going to be right. horrific. So, it, it, well, it doesn't Al take catalyst. I, I it doesn't. Alex, Peter, let's touch on Peter's point of leverage, because that has been a new development with Bitcoin. And there are a lot of people there that have taken out uh, a lot of leverage against their Bitcoin trades. And as we know, when that happens, uh, it can cause a collapse very, very quickly and very, very suddenly. So what's your answer to that, Alex? Well, we, we, again, I'm not talking hypotheticals, right? I mean, again, we, we have a million and a half customers. Like you said, they hold over $25 billion worth of digital currencies, mostly Bitcoin. And when I give you facts, these are facts uh, from the community. It's not some hyperbole from what uh, uh, this person thinks or that person thinks. So uh, we don't see much leverage in the, in the system. And the recent drop rate, by, by the way, from 69 to 60 was all liquidations on people who were uh, on margin. So meaning there's almost no margin left at that 55 to 60,000 level, right? So what's happening with Bitcoin every uh, year or two is that a new base is being established, right? The, the, new, the base used to be uh, 15,000, then it became 29,000. Now it's probably 45 to 50,000. And you're just not going to see Bitcoin go below that for a variety of reasons. And, and go look, below this what? is below those price levels. So, Which price Peter, level? look, it's, it's not too late to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, you know, well, and, and it, no, it's time for a I, shift. Peter, it's time yeah, for if, a shift. If, you know, if I want to lose money, it's not too late. I could buy Bitcoin and lose a bunch of money. I, I, I understand. I have a hard time believing 
that all of the margin debt somehow has been liquidated on the move back to 59,000, that now there are no more people who have debt this on their is, Bitcoin. I, there's no way that that's the truth. All, all exchanges yeah. disclose the, all the position. They tell you exactly how many people are long, how many are short. Part of how Celsius creates yield is by lending to these institutions, to exchanges and institutions who are putting in the long or short position. So, so we know exactly what is the leverage is. And by the way, if you want okay. to join our risk department, we need people who are anti-Bitcoin to come and tell us all the things we yeah, should Yeah, Are you about. talking right. about just your book of business or throughout the entire world? You're telling me that there's no more leverage on watching. Bitcoin, that all the so loans we, have been repaid? We are dealing with 300 counterparties, right? So we watch the entire market. I'm not saying there's no leverage. I'm just telling you that the retail, you're talking about retail people buying on leverage. You can measure that very, very easily, right? That is something that is available. Uh, uh, you, you can go to uh, uh, Open Glass or you can go to a bunch of Masari. All of these platforms show you exactly the leverage. There is, yeah. let's put it this way. The stock market is at all time leverage, right? The leverage yeah. in the stock market is the highest it's ever been in history. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm looking at the stock with, market's a bubble too. I'm not going right. to deny that's that. That's a bubble of uh, hundreds of trillions of dollars. So which well, just one because is the Bitcoin, bubble? Just because which Bitcoin is, is only bubble. one. It, the, it, it, the, Bitcoin the is a bigger market, bubble in that the, the stock market, market has. Look, the dollar market or the crypto market? Look, the crypto the, market. The stock market, the, the stock market is overvalued. Right. Bitcoin has no, no value. One hundred percent of its Bitcoin price is right. bubble. So, Alex, does Bitcoin have intrinsic value? And so just like gold and just like the dollar, uh, Bitcoin derives its value from the fact that other people derives value to it or has certain value. Gold has zero value. OK, yes, you can use it in in, uh, you know, jewelry and you can use it to build the uh, high high fidelity electronic equipment, but that doesn't mean it has any value. So, so the point is, it, 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 since all the value is derived from the fact that all of us vote with our pockets for gold, dollars, or for Bitcoin, and the vote has been casted over the last 13 years, there's no argument about which one of these assets is the one that people trust. Right, or at least the people who decided to migrate their dollars from the fiat system. So we're not talking about a hypothetical. We're talking about $3 trillion that migrated from the fiat world to the crypto world. And since we all vote for it every day, right? We vote to huddle, we vote to basically not use uh, the, the Bitcoin as a form of payment. We, we only use it as a form as a store of value, right? Again, the dollar is a phenomenal form of payment, but it's a horrible store of value. Bitcoin is exactly the opposite. It's a mirror image. It's the other side of the coin because it's an exceptional store of value, but it's a bad form of payment. All right, Peter, let's uh, have you respond to <laughs> yeah. Alex's notion that consensus has already made the decision. All right. Look, first of all, yeah, of course people want to buy Bitcoin. They don't want it because they want to use it as a medium of exchange. They don't want it as a replacement for the dollar or the euro. They think they're going to get rich. People want to buy Bitcoin because they think it's going to the moon, right? They don't think that's going to happen to gold. They know it's not going to happen to the dollar. So, but when people actually want a alternative to fiat money, something that can be both a store of value, a unit of account and a medium of exchange, then they would want to have your tokens backed by gold much more than Bitcoin. Bitcoin can never be a store of value. You could buy Bitcoin today at 60,000 and in a month it could be at 10,000. It could be lower. It's not a store of value. Just because it went way up, that's a speculative asset. That's not a stable conservative store of value. All you're looking at is a small window of time and you're seeing us this huge 10 year bubble where people have gambled and gotten rich holding something that's basically intrinsically worthless. And when you say something like gold has no value, well, basically, according to you, nothing has any value. There, there's no value in anything and it's all worthless. And therefore we might as well buy Bitcoin because nothing on this earth has any actual value. And so, okay, no, no, then we can just describe value. No, you said gold is worthless. Gold has no value. That, that is such all nonsense. Free. All right, Alex, let okay, Peter finish said, that thought. I said all three of them derive their value from exactly the same source, which is no, the they trust don't. group. 
Well, no, no, they, no, they, they do. don't. They do. No. Gold, right? I mean, no. Bitcoin. You agree, that you agree that behind the U.S. dollar, there's about a hundred trillion dollars of unfunded liability. Look, well, I, I, that, I agree right? that the dollar is a problem. Bitcoin is not the okay, solution good. to that problem. It's a bigger well, that's problem. What, that's what Bitcoin we have a is. All right, that's Bitcoin is one hundred percent faith. Alex, Trust. let's let's address Peter's point of whether Bitcoin is indeed a currency or a store of value asset, or is it a speculative asset? Because that was one of the counterpoints that Peter was making. So let's tackle that issue. Uh, again, I can say that gold is a speculative asset. Because but when focusing you buy gold, on Bitcoin, but focusing on Bitcoin, should we be looking at it as a Bitcoin, currency Bitcoin, or store of value? Gold and US dollars are all speculative assets. <laughs> They're all speculative assets. Why? Because they all depend every day on are there more buyers or sellers? Okay, the value of, of dollars is determined every day by how many buyers and sellers show up for the U.S. dollar. And against all odds, the U.S. dollar is increasing in value, right? In the last few weeks, against all odds, with the inflation numbers and the bond markets freezing and the COVID and everything else, more and more people are buying dollars. So because yes, and when there's this uncertainty, people feel more safe with the U.S. dollar than with other fiat currencies. And, and the same way that the U.S. dollar goes up and down in value, gold goes up and down in value, the same way Bitcoin goes up and down in value. The, the rules are exactly the same. Claiming that no, okay. one of them is somehow different than another. Yes, uh, you, you, is, look, you, all right, you, are miss, you are missing the fundamental difference here. I mean, when people demand dollars, it's because they need them to settle transactions. People are still using the dollar as a medium of exchange. First of all, all Americans need dollars to pay taxes. I mean, because taxes are required to be paid in dollars. So there's always going to be demand. But people are buying oil, OPEC prices, oil in dollars. There are all sorts of global trades that are, are settled in dollars. There's a entire bond market uh, you know, in, that, that is in dollars. So the world is using dollars. Now, I agree, eventually they'll stop uh, because they, they shouldn't be using dollars, but they are. So there's demand. There is demand for gold. I mean, only about two trillion of gold's, what, 13 trillion market cap is investors holding gold. The rest of it is uh, used in industry or central banks hold it as the, their main uh, reserve other than fiat. But most of it is used. I mean, it's used in jewelry. It's used in electronics. There are people who need gold and they buy gold every day because they need it. Nobody needs Bitcoin for anything. Yes, the o let's, only people, right, let, me, let me finish. The only people buying Bitcoin are people who think the price is going to go up. You know, earlier you said does the institutions buying Bitcoin prove that it's the new store of value. The only thing Bitcoin proves is that P.T. Barnum was right. There's a sucker born every minute and those suckers are buying Bitcoin. This is without a doubt the biggest scam I've seen in my entire investment career. Of all the bubbles that I've witnessed from the dot com to housing, nothing can compare with the idiocy of, of Bitcoin and the complete that the that nonsense that I hear people say in support of Bitcoin and the things that they say about gold to try to diminish its value, to try to create this false uh, appeal for Bitcoin. I've never seen anything more ridiculous. Nothing that I heard people say during the dot-com bubble or the housing bubble can compare to the irrational comments that I hear every day from people about Bitcoin. All right, Alex, let's talk on the utility aspect that Peter brings up. What is Bitcoin's utility? So it's Peter and uh, Jamie Dimon against the rest of the world. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. Look. The, the whole world is not in on Bitcoin. Stop exaggerating. Well, Peter, we have seen the adoption rate increase at a drastic pace, uh, something like 2,300 yeah, percent just um, just from the uh, last quarter of 2019, about 880 percent from June of last year to this year. So the adoption rate is increasing exactly 2,300 percent since the third quarter of 2019. So uh, the, the, the trend is pointing to mass adoption no, it's Bitcoin. not pointing to mass adoption, not, not even close. The, there are more well, people using it, but, you know, the, they're using it for speculation. They're not using it as a medium of exchange. Well, they're not, well, it's not a currency. They're not doing anything Peter, with right? it. Well, Peter, Peter what would you say to the idea? I have a million and a half customers. 
I have a million and a half customers, so I think I know a little bit better than you what they're using. Yeah, they're gambling on Bitcoin. That's what they're okay, doing. Well, I met I met many of my customers, and I can tell you most of them. All right. Again, one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. The only thing that changed yes, is that it's, it's still worthless. Taking, it's taking sixty thousand dollars to buy one instead of six thousand dollars to buy one. So most of so my what? customers, right? Most of my customers are trying to detach themselves from the dollar fiat system. And this is what we started and, the conversation. Yes, and they think agree, they're going to get you, and they think they're going to get rich in Bitcoin. If they thought Bitcoin had well, if they think Bitcoin has stopped going up, they're going to want to sell their Bitcoin and buy stuff. Alex, we're yeah. going to shift topics now. How are you going to use Bitcoin in 10 to 15 years? Best case scenario, and what does that mean with regards to transaction costs? So what what a person wants to do is hodl or save as many bitcoins as they can you should not be using your bitcoins you should be borrowing fiat or dollars against your bitcoin and spending those <laughs> dollars that's what the rich people do they borrow <laughs> against their real estate they borrow against their stocks and bonds and they allow them to continue to appreciate and in turn basically they defer their taxes on all their capital gains so here is you can do that uh, even with a hundred dollars right you can basically join the club of, 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 of how the rich people uh, make and save and store their value, but you should use digital assets instead of stocks or bonds because those are already trading at all-time highs and you don't want to buy these things at, at their highs. All right, another that, question. That is, that is the Go worst ahead, financial Peter. advice you could give. You're telling people to take I don't give financial advice. That's you what just I gave do. it. You told people to borrow no, money said, against their Bitcoin. You told them to go what, on leverage and take out loans and borrow money. I mean, I, you know, you know, I you know who's going to lose even more money though? The, the lenders. Anyone dumb enough to lend on Bitcoin? Because once Bitcoin implodes, the lenders are going to take a huge hit. You know, that's what happened in the mortgage market. You know, with the subprime market. And I always said this when I was warning about it and encouraging people to short the subprime market. I knew that the the lenders were going to be left holding the bag when the people who borrowed money to buy houses couldn't repay their loans. Well, the people who borrow money against their Bitcoin. Ultimately, they're not going to have the money back because I think Bitcoin is going to collapse so fast that the lenders are not going to be able to liquidate the Bitcoin fast enough to recover the loans. And so there, there's there going to be a huge here. loss there among the lending communities because they loaned against a phony asset. There was just an article in Forbes that listed the 10 richest people in the world and how none of them paid any taxes. And when they dug through their taxes, they realized all of them borrowed against their stock. All of them. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> And Warren Buffett and uh, Steve Jobs. And Steve What's Jobs. your point? No, well, but at that. least, look, at least stocks are real assets. Many of them pay dividends that you can use to make your margin payment. Bitcoin uh, pays look, dividends, this, Peter. Bitcoin pays right. dividends. Try Celsius. How does Bitcoin 6. pay a dividend? 6.2% dividend. dividend. Because we earn yield. How do you earn what, yield on Bitcoin? What do you do well, to generate uh, income look, on that Bitcoin? I'm happy to spend an hour with you. Yeah, you're uh, trading it. You've got to be taking health. tremendous amount of risk. The Bitcoin no, itself it, doesn't generate any yield. It does, just like How? any other asset can generate yield. Gold. No, but we what earnings? Gold, what earnings here, does the Bitcoin gold, generate? Gold generates five and a half percent at Celsius yield. No, tokenized what gold. What are you doing to generate that? You, you've got. You must be taking tremendous risk. To you're generate those returns, risk. of course you are. Risk. Okay, you're not. You know, right. Of course you must be. Look, this you, you, the, again, you this, can't. I'm just, not. I'm not. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just explaining okay. that this is a, a, interest a, a rates are practically zero. An amazing How can you get five percent interest on gold? It's an amazing opportunity for people to unbank themselves, right? Take advantage yeah, of this you know, market. You know who also had an amazing opportunity? Bernie Madoff Bernie. had an amazing opportunity right, too. Alex. Yeah, I am uh, placing a bet that Bitcoin will be above 150,000 uh, by tax day, by April 15th. We will see Bitcoin going at or above 150,000. It will take a correction after that. I said that several times. It will go be back below 100,000, but we have not seen the blow off top yet for Bitcoin.